So building applications, web applications, or coding in general has never been so easy until we started seeing a lot of different tools online that allows you to literally build anything you want. As of late, one of the most popular tool that allows you to prompt and then get literally an entire application built before your eyes with code and everything is bolt.new. If you go to bolt.new, you can see that this is what you have. It says here, what do you want to build? And then prompt, run, edit, and deploy full stack web apps. So essentially you can start prompting here, or you can go ahead and say, for instance, build a mobile app with native script or create doc site with Vitpress uh, or whatever you want, right? So in this case, I can just say, build a chat app using next JS, something like that, hit enter. And we are going to see something happening here. So what happens is that it's going to create this, you see to the right here, this opened, and it gives me the code and the preview of exactly what I'm trying to do, what I wanted to do. So it's writing the code, which is really amazing. As you see here, it's kind of hard to see because this is kind of small. But you can see that it's writing the code and creating the files and everything. And also it has this preview here where you're able to see the preview of your application. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, we have some errors here. I'm going to just clear it. I'm going to close that. And look at that. We have the code, right? The app, we have all of this, the UI and everything, all of the code needed to build such application simply and then we have the preview here that gives us exactly what we looked for okay so we can type something and say hello world hit enter and then let's see it says hello world here and even shows indeed other chat people who are chatting with us so this is great and you can see it's showing here very good, very good. So this is the power of AI and the tools we can use it to literally build anything you want. But here's the thing, the problem or rather the thing about this is that even though it's free to a certain point, at a certain point, you will have to pay because it is a service. Now, there is this very wonderful gentleman. His name is Cole Medin. What he did is because the code of Bolt that new is actually open source, he took that code, right? He cloned that code, that repo, and then he added his own touch to it. And he actually has other people contributing to his GitHub repo. So this gentleman here, he deserves a huge hug. So if you can go and watch his video, uh, he didn't ask me to do this. I'm just a big fan for what he's done. The beauty now is that with his repo, if we go to his repo, now you can get this whole code, you can clone his repo, and then you can actually use your own large language model or a model or llama model or any other model locally and run your new bold that new locally. This is very powerful. And so that is exactly what I'm going to show you how to quickly do in this video. Now he has everything set up for you. So the first thing you need to do, of course, is to click here and get this URL here. So this is the GitHub URL so that you can get to clone this repository. And if you look at this repository, you can see that it has over 2.3 thousand likes or in this case stars. That's pretty amazing and it's growing really fast and a lot of forks. So people are forking this repository to run things locally. So that's what we're doing here. All right, so let's go ahead and open our terminal. So, and if you go to the readme in this repository, he actually goes through the process of showing exactly how to do that locally on your machine, okay? So first of all, he makes sure that you set up, you have to install Git and then you need to install Node.js. You gotta have that installed okay so it's got all these instructions you can do so next you copy this git clone and go to your terminal and say git clone and you're going to be able to clone and fork this repository i already have this so i'm not going to do that but go ahead and do that and wait until everything is cloned locally okay so once you have it cloned go ahead and open the project on your code editor here and there are a lot of things that you will see to the right so one thing that you will see right away once you do that you will see that you have this env example file and you need to change that so remove the example so you just only have the env so what that means is that you need to go ahead and file the get that env dot it's going to be env 
that example. And what we want to do is you want to change it so that way it looks like this. So it just says .env. Okay. And then what you want to do is you can put inside of this file some open AI, the, some keys that you may need for different models. So there are different ones here. So we have the open AI API key. If you have one, add your own here. If you have Anthropic API key, add there and so forth. Okay. Olama and so forth. So you don't have to add anything actually, but the ones that, are, that you have, you can add them here. So once you have that, you actually need to go ahead and run with Docker. This is the fastest and best way to get this running locally. Now, there are other options here that you can uh, proceed with, but I found running with Docker is always the best. Okay, so Docker is a container framework that allows you to run containers. So essentially run applications in their own environment that have everything they need to run. Okay, so what do you do? You want to go to www.docker.com. I'm going to right click and open right away and go ahead and install Docker. Now there are different versions of Docker. And what I would suggest you do is to install the Docker desktop. Now you can see here, it could be on Mac, uh, Intel chip or Apple Silicon or Windows. So find the correct one for you. Go ahead and download and run it. There's a lot of tutorials out there and it's very easy really. Just install it and let's get going. Once you do that, copy this command npm, npm run docker build and go to terminal and say npm run docker build. So I'm not going to do that because I've already done that, but go ahead and do that. Okay, so next what we'll do is you're going to take this command here, docker compose profile development up. This is going to spin up the entire container and run it so you actually have access. Brand new, bold that new application running locally. Oh, this is very exciting. Okay. And as you do this, make sure, of course, that you were running Olama internally because that's what we're going to be using soon. So take this, this, so go ahead and copy this command and go to your terminal and run it. Now, in my case here, I actually, because of the version that I have installed of Docker, I have to say Docker space compose and then like this. Okay. Which is a little bit different from what you have here. So just figure out which one works for you. If this doesn't work for you, you get an error, then make sure to run like this Docker space, nothing compose and like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and run real quick. Okay. So if you see this, that means Docker, even it's not running locally. So what do you have to do? You have to make sure that you run Docker, the Docker application locally. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Okay. Once you run it, make sure to go back and say Docker compose. Okay. Voila. And after a few minutes, depending on your situation, because I've already ran this many times. So I have the container. This may take a little while and there we go. So you can see that we have this local HTTP local host. This is the port where the bolt that new forked and different version is actually running. running. So I'm going to control click on that. And if all goes well, and look at this, you have bolt. If you look at the differences here, this is very much similar to, in fact, it is the same in so many ways to this bolt here that we saw earlier. Okay. So let me go ahead and start a new chat. This is the real bolt, right? And there we go. So it's exactly the same as you see here. Very good. Now make sure that it looks something like this. Now the beauty here, the difference here is that if you click here because of the way things were set up internally, now we have options to use a different models. So open AI, if I go like that, it's going to give me this option. And the reason why I can see all of these is because I actually added open AI API key in that, that env file. Okay. Very cool. So, but in this case here, because we want to run everything locally, look at this. I have the option of a llama. If I click here, it's going to show me a few versions that are running. Now, obviously you have to have Olama and a few models that have been installed locally. So now there's one important thing here because of the context window for these large language models, um, for this to work perfectly well locally to where you actually will see this window that you saw earlier. So if I go, for instance, start a blog with Astro, you will see that it will start running and we have this code window that is going to show here. So for this to work running locally with Olama, you need to do something else. What you need to do is uh, create a different file that will increase in this case, the context window, which means it will make it so that the large language model is able to output and get the input with a 
input that is large in terms of the context in terms of contents right that is what's going to allow it to show to the right here what we need to show what we run because now if i just pick something like this if i say click here build an app use that it's going to work because it's going to go ahead and use this llama 3.2 which is already installed this is locally by the way you can see it says localhost and it's going to do everything right this code will work but you can see we don't get that window with the text editor and all the files okay so we need to change something here's what you need to do if we go back to our code is we need to go and create this model files like that and i'm going to create this mode or model file just exactly like this okay and then what you will do is you're going to uh, in this case override or create a new version of a certain model but now we're going to pass its parameter context to be larger so this will be a good number which is 32,768 okay and what will happen when we run this is going to create a new version of in this case llama 3.2 but now with a larger context which will allow us to when we run here it's going to be able to show the window to the right so we can see the code and everything so i already done that but what i'm going to show you is that i have two files you can create as many files as i want as you want and the now as you know also olama has many many different models that you can use for this case i'm using this quen coder we can go to olama let's go to olama real quick and once you go to Olama here and we can go, let's go and search for, I'm just going to say code or coder like that. You find this Quen.5 coder. If you click, it's going to tell you exactly a uh, different version. This is 71.b, 15b. We want to probably get this 7b here. Go ahead and copy that and run locally to pull that in. So once you have that, you're going to do the same thing as I showed you here for this case called Quen Coder. You can name it whatever you want. And then you do the same thing. So you could say from Quen 2.5 Coder 7B, we change the parameter to say context 32,768. Very important. Now, once you do that, then you have to run the following command. So you say Olama create dot F and then Quen Coder. Okay this has to be exactly the name that you passed along here for this model files so there's no extension nothing okay exactly this name and then uh, you pass in what is the name you want to add or when we create this new version of quencoder which now will have a different context a larger context okay so hit enter and that's going to happen make sure you do that all right so once you do that then you will be able to see something totally different that means when we go to our bolt here notice this is local host so what you can do now is let me go and open this create uh, a new chat right now and now you can go back to olama and then look what will happen i have llama 3 vision latest all of that but i want to go and you can see you're going to see what you have added so in this case is quen 2.5 coder extra ctx for context uh, 7b Okay, that is a difference. So it has to be the name that you gave in the model file. Okay, so we're going to choose it. Notice what will happen now. You can say build a simple ne simple to do app in Next.js. Let's hit enter. Voila. Once you do that, you can see now we get this preview um, as well as the actual code structure here. All right, there we go. So things are happening and look what you got it may take a little while because this is a local model and not as powerful but let's wait okay and just like that you can see in preview we have the code everything it's included indeed and all that but we can see we have all the code and everything is here preview look at that say hello if you add you can see it is actually adding everything it works and voila so there we go so now you have something and if you want you can continue saying here can you add some styling something like that and so what will happen now if you look at the code you should go ahead and run all of that it's going to create page index.js again and start restructuring all the code to add what needs to be added 
Okay, so there's the code and all this information. Let's see, it will take some time. Let's go ahead and go to preview. Looks like it has some issues here. So compile, fail to compile. Okay, I can also just copy this. Cut this error and paste it in and see. able to use local large language model Olama in this case through Olama I should say and to be able to see the code being put together even though we should having some issues here right now oh let's see it's not really updating everything but it's okay but there we go so you have something that is pretty much usable but all of that is local now here's what I'll say they there are very powerful large language models out there that you can add into your that env file that i showed you so essentially if you want to use something more powerful you would come here just like i did for openai api here change add the key if you want to use grok api anthropic so whatever you want and then you can change around here the actual model that you want let me try and do openai because i have it and I'm going to use, um, let's just do that one. Okay. Let me create a new chat. So I'm just going to go back and change. Oh, actually, let's go to OpenAI just because I have it. Okay. Let's use this one. Okay. Let's just click and say build that. Okay. So let's see. It's creating all the files, the code, and everything. And look at this. <laughs> Very cool cool day so you can see different large language models of course they have more power and so forth this is great which means that things will work better so i can go ahead and say make the theme dark maybe that's going to help let's see And voila, just like that, it went ahead and changed everything and we have the dark theme that's working. And there you go. So this is really good news. I hope this was helpful. Of course, you can always go to the main readme file to learn about this, to learn how to run something locally. This is extremely powerful. You can see that you can build web applications. You can actually get going real fast building really production applications of course you are needing you may need to know a little bit more about code but i you hear people saying but you hear stories of people who don't know much about code and are able to actually build full-fledged applications so the beauty here is that you are able to run this locally using uh, your own large language models or free large language models using Olama. So this is amazing. So there's so much coming up and uh, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next.